Are you ready for the weekend yet? We have events, news, and a guest for you to enjoy this Lake Life weekend. Hello and welcome to another episode of Lake Life Weekend Podcast. I'm Dirk, I'm your host, and it is weekend 34 approaching. Summer is not gone yet. We have many, many beautiful days in front of us, hopefully. Um, tune in to a beautiful story from Jamie and Dave Swenson, which followed a event created by Greg Hodgen in North Carolina, Wake the World. You will hear the full story and how you may help next year to bring smiles and laughter and a good time to kids from children's homes. Really stay tuned for a beautiful story to come. Get ready to party with us in Vergas. 32 Below and Tripwire are performing live at the ball field at the Vergas, Air, Vergas Open Air Festival, September 1st, Sunday. It's an event which um, is organized to help fund the renovation for the community center in Vergas. So if you purchase a ticket, all proceeds will go towards the renovation fund, which is greatly appreciated check that out we have a beer garden also proof is coming um, there's uh, Oma's bread from Wedina with a German style brat and actually their son is coming from Germany only for this event to barbecue for you so it's gonna be fun let's go out and enjoy let's go out and explore Sunday September 1st gates open at 5 p.m. Yeah, I don't want to keep this much longer here from our interview part. Please also go to our website, lakelifeweekend.com, to find out what's happening in the area. Shoot us an email to hello at lakelifeweekend.com if you have ideas or guests to propose. Dave and Jamie actually approached us, so that was really nice. Thank you for that. And um, I was able to actually visit them one more time at their lake and uh, very nice and kind people so thank you very much for putting this all together for the children and coming here to share the story with our audience big shout out to wake the world to north carolina and to all the many states um, where they are performing those day events for children so thank you for tuning in have a great weekend ahead and now hear our story in our lake life weekend podcast have a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Welcome to our interview part. I'm here with uh, Jamie and Dave Swanson from Comrad Lake. Hi. Hi. Hello. Thanks for coming and telling us more about uh, Wake the World, uh, the organization and the event that you are producing or that you're spearheading in our area for kids. Before we deep dive into your organization and um, and what we're doing with Wake the World and what it is all about, maybe we can touch a little bit more uh, on you too. And um, I know you live year round on a lake with your family. Um, tell us a little bit more about where you're from and, uh, and what you do at the lake. Who wants to start? Uh, I can, I guess. So uh, we moved down to the lake full time about two years ago. Uh, we're on Big Current Lake specifically, and we moved from Glendon, Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, that we had been for about 14 years, I think, before that. A few years before that in Fargo. And I originally grew up in Moorhead, so I hadn't very strayed too far mm -hmm. from the area for the most part. I, I grew up in Faustin, Minnesota, so I still was only about two hours northeast of Fargo. So we're both in, in the general realm of where we grew up. Yeah, yeah. So you're both Minnesotans, <laughs> and you both lived and knew lake life you always uh, went to the lake when you were so, younger okay. so i did when I, I think i was about seven or eight my parents bought the first lake cabin that we had yeah they had my my mom's german so she did not grow up down in minnesota my dad was from dilworth originally uh, and he had always liked uh, sporting lake activities so he was big into that and like i said when i was about seven they bought the first lake cabin they basically had one one cabin or another all the way growing up as far as Leech Lake, Minnesota, over by Walker, I was yeah. at the farthest. Um, Melissa, they were on for a while, and Big Detroit and Comorant, uh, Little Detroit, I guess I should say, and Comorant eventually. So I was, always, I, always, I had always grown up around it, fishing. My dad really liked water skiing, and my uncle really liked water skiing. 
and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I kind of grew up all around it. You've seen quite a few lakes. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you? And Are you? Did you grow up on a farm or what's happening? I grew up, up out in the country on a farm. Um, my parents would take us to a lake that was about six miles away, which actually my dad now lives on that lake. Um, but my mom always took us to the shallowest lake she could find because she almost drowned as a kid and was scared of the water. So okay. we could go all the way out to the buoys and as, as kids it was up to about our waist, which was about her knees. So if she had to run in and rescue us, she knew she could. Um, but so yeah, so I grew up a little bit differently. We'd go to the lake to swim and for the day, but definitely not weekends at the lake with a cabin. Okay, okay. But uh, glad your mom didn't uh, protect you all the way <laughs> from the lake. <laughs> she did not keep us away from right, it. Right, no. right. No, that's good. But yeah, um, Minnesota, in my opinion, is lake life. So pretty much whoever was born in Minnesota uh, has been in touch with uh, one of the many thousands uh, of lakes. Um, um, what I was curious about, you live year round now at the lake and uh, I know you are blessed to be uh, working at home, both of you, and yep, very uh, much so. you're pretty much the head of the household, and I mean Jamie now, <laughs> <laughs> because you raised the family, Yes. right? Yep. Uh, um, so I would love to hear a true story on how it is to actually make that happen, you know, um, a lot of people are weekenders, uh, or um, they, they exit their work life pre-retirement, uh, um, there's not too many that really live year round and raise a family on the lake. You do, how, how, how is that going? How is that possible? <laughs> uh, well, so backing up a little bit, I've, I've worked remotely, quote unquote, for uh, probably, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 years, somewhere in that realm. Um, so you don't have to go anywhere, so, so you I, work from home. Right, I work from home. Um, when we decided to move down here two years, two years ago, we kind of were like, well, we could live anywhere. Why are we living in town, right? right. So that's basically the decision when we went to move to the lake, you know, for other reasons. Um, one of the things of of being at the lake permanently is you, you have to realize that you are at the lake, that you have to take advantage of being there. Like yeah. it, it's like when you when you go for the weekend, per se, you have it in your mind, like I'm going to the lake, you know, in this area. You're going to the lake, you're gonna have fun, you're gonna fish, whatever you do, right? But when you live there, you almost forget that. So you have to kind of be intentional, you're like, hey, it's a beautiful day. We need to go use the lake, right? You have to actually be conscious. Like when I was actually in college, I lived on the lake one summer and we worked in town at a lumber yard. This was up in Walker, Minnesota actually. And we worked so much. It was, the intent was that we we're gonna work half time, part time, right? Well, of course that didn't work out. We always needed more help, right? So we basically worked, me and a friend worked like the whole summer, like the whole time we're like, well, we're not doing it. Like we would be tired, we'd go home take a shower, it's like seven o'clock at night, and it's like, what are we gonna do? Well, we'd run into town, and then do something for a little bit, and then get up at seven in the morning, and go back to work again. So it's like, we didn't really take advantage of it very well. Halfway through the summer, I was like, well, I made enough money, I'm done. <laughs> so I took advantage of it, but you had to consciously, like at that time, you didn't even think of it, like, cause you're just there all the time, you use it whenever you want, but halfway through the summer, it's like, we didn't do anything hardly on the lake, because we were working all the time. I have the same struggle. I live on a small lake, and my cabin is not so close to the water's edge. I see the lake <laughs> every morning and every, I hope every evening if it's not too dark getting home. But I have to stop myself and like take a glimpse or like a, like a good look. Yeah. I jump in too little. I always say like, oh man, tonight you gotta... And then it's, oh, now it's 7.30 and I'm so tired and I got to walk the dog. And yeah, yeah so yes, you, we live by the lake year round or all the time and we really have to be cautious about it. Very, yeah. very interesting. I have the same struggle. Or it's like you take the, the boat, is like in our boat, say the boat was covered. It's like you have to actually like, oh, it's covered. I don't want to take cover. No, no, <laughs> take the cover off. Like don't let that be the limiter to you, you right. know, using your stuff. So we are extremely spoiled and we're extremely <laughs> blessed by living on it. So, so how, may I ask how many children you have? We have three kids. Oh, wow. um, our oldest is 18 and is going to school at NDSU in Fargo this fall. And then we have a 13-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter. Oh yeah, okay. So we have, we have a big spread. <laughs> um, but yeah, our oldest, when we moved down to Big Cormorant Lake, our middle child and our littlest were gonna go to Lake Park Audubon Schools. That was my next question, where do they go to We school? let our oldest commute back to Glendon to finish out at DGF because she was going to her junior year of high school 
So, uh, um, yeah, she had also, a lot of she freedom. A, she she drove a... back and forth. It was about 40 minutes, you know, either way. And, you know, she she grew to like it. She's a much more confident winter driver now because of it. <laughs> but She didn't skip. In Germany, we always skipped school, and it was an opportunity. <laughs> I think in America, that is not really an option. Yeah, yeah, no, in there. She, she cares about her grades in her good, schoolwork good. too much, so she, yeah. she didn't skip. <laughs> but, yeah, so... Uh, um, and it made her be more independent about everything, not just... Like, if you forget your backpack, well, that's, like, 40 minutes away now. Yeah. You know? So, right? Before we live, like, half, half a mile from the school. I run home. Yeah. yeah. The, the the two remaining school kids, mm -hmm. uh, is there a bus picking them up, or do you have to bring them? No, there's a bus that comes, really? stops right outside our house, and actually we had our option, like, four different school districts. Their bus comes right by our house. Um, but oh, really? there was no reason to not send them to the district that we lived in. Oh, okay. Um, so, but the kindergartner, I'll still probably just drive her to school. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Her, her big brother, with being involved in sports and different things, he may get on the bus in the morning, but almost never rides the bus home. Okay. So uh, He stays in the... Yeah, because then he's got football practice, or he's yep. got track practice in the spring. and. Okay. And then you pick him up later. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's... Are you happy with the school district, with the school? Very much so. It, w it was a great move. In DGF was great as Kaylee was going through it, but it's been just, I don't even know what to say. It's been great for our son. Like, he just jumped right in and really got involved, and it was a good move for him. And yeah, really cool. last, after like a year, he's like, best decision I ever made. It's like, hmm, interesting. He we're, said that. Yeah, yeah. He, he said that. He claimed the decision to move to the lake oh. and go to LPA. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. That is really cool. But, and the preschool, so our five-year-old will just start kindergarten now in September, and mm -hmm. preschool was great for her. She had a great team of teachers and friends that she met, and mm -hmm. so, yeah, no, all around, it's been a wonderful move, so. Hmm. Yeah, though, I, I, I wish... Uh, I met more people like you <laughs> to hear their story and I said that earlier uh, in a different with a different guest but I think we are on the best way of like um, um, renaissance of small town America where more and more people m may take advantage of the smaller communities the smaller school districts and the beauty of the outdoors whether they live on a lake directly uh, or, or close in Lakes Country. I mean, Lakes Country is big and we have rural uh, homes too. Let's just say not everybody can necessarily afford a home on a lake. Uh, let's just picture. But um, it has, it's not an obstacle. Like you said, there's right. four different school buses going by. Yeah. I mean, right. I didn't know. Yeah. Yep. So Fargo people are like, hey, if they have a husband or even a wife that can work remotely uh, uh, and one commutes, I, I think that will grow more and more. Do yeah. you have friends that want to follow your... Uh, uh, I don't know. You know, I think it's funny because people ask, you know, which one of us works in Fargo? And we're like, well, neither one of us, neither one of us had the commute, but our 16-year-old daughter got the commute. <laughs> so there was still a commute involved. Sure, it yeah. just wasn't ours, but it was something, you know, she was willing to do to go to her school district. Right. And, you know, with the, you know, downsizing movement and tiny houses and those things, I think people will start to realize that if they're willing to go to a smaller house, lake life isn't necessarily out of reach. Correct. You know, it, they may not have the big house they had in Fargo or Moorhead or Glendon or Holly, but it's doable. Correct. So uh, uh, you mentioned tiny house. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, um, we are one generation, let's say. Um, I guess we all grew up in the 80s, uh, born in the 70s, I just assume. Okay, yep, good. That's yep. correct. <laughs> uh, so uh, the tiny house concept we see more and more on like Facebook or like wherever in the news. Um, maybe we are not so... Maybe you you think your daughter could? Is that a generation or? Uh, oh, she could do it. Oh, she yep. Yeah. She is so not about material things. She's all about experiencing the world and where she can travel to and what she can see. So instead of going shopping, she would much rather buy a plane ticket or a bus ticket somewhere. So yeah, she could do it, no problem. Interesting. So that generation, she's just eighteen, just an adult, uh, born then uh, two thousand. She was born 2000. in two thousand. She's just about nineteen. Yep. And uh, and you you agree, yeah? So that generation is more smaller, f more flexibility. Well, more she is. She is. A I don't want <laughs> A lot of her friends are all about shopping and how many clothes or shoes or what brands they can have. Oh. She is. She's definitely not that way. Okay. So. So she's an example, uh, an exception to the rule. She is probably an exception hmm. to the rule. But disappointing again. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I it's hard to genericize. I right. think you know everybody's different. And right. One thing I was gonna bring, I was gonna mention with the the living at the lake, working at the lake thing, 
is it takes a different like work mentality. It, it, you you have to be like disciplined, like I said earlier, almost to in, make sure you enjoy that you're at the lake, mm-hmm. you're in the lakes area, whatever it is. But you also have to be the same when you're gonna work on something. You have to work on it too. Like you, you can't have the, there's not the motivation when you're working from home that like there's 50 other people in the office. I gotta be there on time. I can't, don't want to leave early. Like you got zero of that external pressure, right? <laughs> Expectations. So well, you have to be disciplined enough to like, I want to get my stuff done or whatever, you know, your job is. That's the fear from the employers, yeah, right? Absolutely. Are they actually doing their job? How do you clock in? Yep. Uh, but um, tell us a little bit, uh, uh, what, if you may, what industry are you then S- working? So I'm in the technology industry. Uh, specifically, I work for Alarm.com, which, uh, which does security, um, modernizes security uh, and the automation sort of thing. So um, if you have a security system and you can control it from your phone, yeah, there's a really good chance it's alarm.com system. Okay. Uh, if you have ADT, for example, yeah, uh, we actually produce majority of the product for them. It's branded as ADT. We actually yeah. make most software for. I've it. seen That's the little thing. symbols. Uh, yep. Uh, exactly. So any you know, if you're using your phone or the web browser, or whatever, to monitor your home, control your home, whatever, it's very good chance it's one of our systems. So you are in the tech industry, yep. and that doesn't matter where you're located, and you sometimes have to travel. Yeah, so I don't, you know, every couple months or so, I will go to one of our offices in the East Coast or West Coast. Um, like our our team, like my team specifically, we're very diverse. We have we have um, <coughs> people in Romania actually. Okay. Um, that programmers, we, we have programmers in Romania, testing in Romania. You know, we also have some in the states. So you know, we're we're diverse already. Yeah. And like we're not in the same time zones and that sort of thing. So it really doesn't matter that so you're on lake time. Doesn't matter too much, <laughs> right? Exactly. It works <laughs> actually Sorry. great for as long, me. As long as he gets his work done, it doesn't matter. It works great for me time. actually, because in the morning I can talk to the Romania crew who it's their evening or yep. early evening, yep. and then you know by the time the California offices, which the other ones I talk to quite a bit, by the time they're getting going, it's like noon my time. Yep. So the overlap, it's kind of nice for me because then I can kind of get stuff done in between. And <laughs> I I do not have meetings same. all the time. Our developers uh, actually on our web and uh, work in Germany. Mm-hmm. And so when I have phone conferences to just say like, hey, where are we at? What are you doing? That is like at 7.30 a.m. because plus seven hours, that is like 4.30. No, wait a second, 7.30? It's (laughs) 3.30. And so uh, I can still uh, meet their afternoon and uh, uh, I start my day with connecting. Yeah, uh, the time zones is beautiful. Yeah, I agree. You work internationally, (laughs) it's really interesting. And uh, do, if I may ask, so do you also do video uh, conferences with them, or do you just email, chat? Like, yeah. We, how is the correspondence? Yeah, it's all the above. Um, okay. We do the video chat. I mean, uh, personally, I turn my video off a lot because my connection isn't quite fast enough to have, like, five video streams. Oh, sure. From other people and my own uploading, so I ah. turn mine off a lot. However, okay. we're supposedly getting fiber here. I was going to say. Any day. I just spoke to Mr. Arvik, <laughs> yeah. actually, uh, in an interview which is coming, and uh, yeah, it was fascinating that they started with fiber optics in the 90s, yeah. uh, putting them everywhere, 90s, So, yeah, uh, and he was very proud uh, on, on the development, so I don't know if they are out there, but like, it's actually fascinating. I have, on Lake 7, which is a tiny little remote location, I have the like kick-ass internet yeah. connection in my Yeah, opinion. ours like, is it's amazing. They literally just bored in like a month ago, so it's Last Coming? week they came and put the box outside of the house. Okay. So now it's got to go outside in, and then okay. we should be good. <laughs> so close, hopefully. And that's also one thing that I really th- find fascinating is we are really connected. Yeah. I mean, we have five. We are so connected. Then, uh, actually, um, Mr. Arvik was disappointed that he asked me later. So how is your, how is your Netflix? Does it buffer a lot? <laughs> and I said, No, not at all. He's like, Really. Well, I'm on Little Pine, and mine buffers between 8.30 and 11. I don't know who's all in. <laughs> so here in town, he was, uh, like, his internet was a little bit slower than mine on Lakes, and I was just amazed. Yeah. But no, the funny thing is, is we're getting fiber, and we'll have really high speed, but friends of ours who live just down in another corner of the lake, they didn't run it down by them. Oh. So they're still 12 to 24 months out. So okay. we're kind of lucky, yeah. you know, he with him working from home that we are in the stretch where they actually ran it. Okay. But yeah, I mean it's been fine thus thus far. It just you don't you know you don't want to have like two net streams and four video chats going on. Right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you live lake life year round, and uh, you love the winters and the summers, and you raise a family, and you have young children, and now actually to fill that in, you 
emailed us, I believe, or, or Facebooked us. Um, or so Instagram, one, one of the, of the above. above. One yeah. of the above. We <laughs> got contacted by you a few weeks back uh, about your event and invited us to come by. And then Mason uh, uh, actually was present or visited you and captured uh, the day. And uh, you organize an annual event um, for children uh, called uh, uh, Wake the World. And that's like a nationwide uh, organization. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about everything that you know about the history? Why <coughs> does it exist? Where is it from? And then how you got affiliated. And I understand that you are ah, the, the chapter organizers or, or, or like yeah 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 so I can expand <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. so tell us about this organization yeah so wake the world uh, I so back up one step so we do a lot of water sports activities now we wakeboard a lot um, we surf also uh, we don't water ski much or any water skiing but we're out there all the time we do like 150 hours a year on our boat that sort of <laughs> stuff we're always teaching somebody like every weekend can I come? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, 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 Anytime yeah. you Check want, question. seriously. Okay. Okay. That's his happy place That's, is on yeah. the boat, whether he's riding or driving or teaching. Awesome. That is his happy place. Right. So, so, so the more people we can have out, the better. He it's loves like it. for me when I'm out on the boat, it's like you escape from everything else that's going on because you got waves, water, safety, everything to think about. You're right. not worried about like that email you should send or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, right? So great. it's a really escape. nice escape. I need for to come. It. Yeah, you need to come, <laughs> exactly. You need to escape. So you're so a anyway. lot of people. Right. So in, in I looked... I don't know, over the last five years since we really got into this stuff, it was like, you know, are there events around here? And there's so Minneapolis and, you know, around. Right. But not a ton, right? There are any events in general. Right. So I don't know. I don't Three, four years ago, I was looking for events, and I ran into this Wake the World thing. I saw the website, wake, waketheworld.org. Yeah. And I saw it, and I'm like, well, that's really cool. They, they, they go out, and volunteers come and bring their boats out for a day, and they go find kids who wouldn't usually get to go to the lake, like, like on their websites, like kids in children's homes or wherever, right? Yeah. And uh, volunteers bring their boats out, and you basically have a day at the lake for people that don't usually do it. Right. Sounded really neat, you know. That's nice. Three years goes by, and then this winter, I was, you know, looking for, you know, purpose and vision and, you know, ways to give back and share the blessing and stuff like that. And I thought about this again and ran in, looked at the website, and I'm like, I was just do it. Where are they from? So you you contact them by email. So yeah. WakeTheWorld.org. Yep. So so the story about them, I guess, is where you first started this question. Uh, <laughs> they uh, about I think that was in 2007. A guy named Greg. Um, twelve years ago. Twelve years ago, uh, a guy named Greg in North Carolina. He he told me the spiel when he was here a month ago or whatever it was. Oh, he visited uh, you. He he came here for our first event. Yes. No kidding. Absolutely. Yeah. He tries to make the first one of each event just to meet the people and like. Yeah, understand, and I heard him tell you know why he did it, and it took him I can't remember several years, in like several events, like getting a car accident, and he was he figured out how he's blessed and how he came back. So finally, he he came back. He's like, I need to take these kids out that he had met earlier, like years before earlier, on the lake, see if they want to you know have fun. So him and his him and I don't remember how he said three or it five was, friends. It was eight families. Was it eight families? It? And they they called the children's home there, and they said, hey, we want to I think two children's homes if I remember right. Uh, we want to bring these kids out for a day on the water. <clears throat> so we did. And then, you know, he, he said it was it was such a uh, rewarding and, like, humbling and all across the board Sparkly event. the eyes and yeah. they the, like the kids. It, but up. not only the kids, but all of the volunteers, the boat drivers, all those. He's like, you, you're doing it all for the kids and everything's about the kids, and which is the purpose. And he's like, you will see, like, after you do it, it's like you as the volunteers and the boat drivers and the boat volunteers are like, that's just as rewarding for me. To see these kids and to, to help, like show them stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's what he did it 12 years ago was the first one, and then now I think as of this year, I think the latest he told me they have about 58 events this year. 58. 58 and nationwide. Nationwide, and I think Canada. And Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Canada. Tw like 25, 30 states or something like that. Wow. So his originally was North Carolina. Um, and he said that he's like the coolest part is he he's never recruited anybody to ever do an event. They just approached him. Yeah, he's like every single one of these events, you know, fifty like you. of them, like me. He's like every one of them came to me and said, "Hey, I want to do one of these. Where I'm at, how do I do it?" Yeah, 
and which is basically what I had said. It's a huge network now. Yeah, and and so he has, you know, he's it's very loosely structured. Like I asked him, like, what's the schedule? Like all this, he's like, well, I'll send you what I do, okay. and you can do whatever you want. He's like, you can have it a whole day. You can just have lunch. You can have no lunch. You can it's your structure, whatever you want to do, what in your area, what makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So like, you know, so he's like, basically, you need to pick the date, the location, and find the kids. And the volunteer. And put it out there. Mm -hmm. You will get the volunteers. Oh. That's what he's at. He's like, oh. you, you pick the day location and the kids, the volunteers will come to you. We're like, okay, <laughs> sounds good. And, but in our mind, it's like, well, yeah, we got friends with, with boats. That, you know, you got to have an inboard boat or a jet boat, basically. No, yeah. no outboards, right, for safety for purposes. Safety. okay. Like, that's a qualification. And then boat drivers actually have, a, have to do a, a safety, safety test or, like, the Minnesota, you know, the card you get when you're 12. Yeah, that you have to do that, or in North Dakota, any of those qualify, but you have to have those or sure. do them ahead of time. But yeah, he's basically you get the date, location, and the kids. Yeah, like then you know how many boats you need. Basically, one boat per three kids is what you aim for. Okay. Oh and, wow. Yeah, he's like in the, in the, the volunteers, and you know, and so you can contact businesses obviously and everything else, but usually you tell them what it is, and you know, and then if they're interested, say, well, how can I help? And then you can say, well, you know, we need volunteers, we need you know donations for this or whatever you want to do, which is basically what we did. And who did you invite? Where did you invite the children from? So I just started making phone calls. I started with Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch in Fargo mm -hmm. and got in touch with their wellness coordinator. Mm -hmm. And uh, he loved the idea. He grew up wakeboarding and doing things on the water, but didn't know how to bring that to those kids mm -hmm. and had thought about it for years. You know, they'll take them. They may get to go kayaking or they may get to go fish off of a pontoon, but they've never had this experience. Active. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so he was super excited and had to get, you know, clearance from some other people, but um, so that was where we started. And then our oldest daughter is a kinship mentor yeah. for Becker County, okay. so kind of like a big brother, big sister type of program. Mm -hmm. So uh, her contact through kinship was the next person I contacted. And uh, so we were able to look at those kids who, you know, need those adult mentors. And uh, so kids from the kinship program, and the Becker County foster care program. And then if, you know, there happen to be people in the shelter there, um, those were our three for Becker County. So you invited a big group. How many children were you? We ended up with about 35 kids that day. Whoa. We had 11 boats. Um, so yeah, it turned into a, a, big event. a big event. But yeah, I mean, the we're actually looking at a second event now because it impacted the kids so much, the Fargo kids. Well, the other kids too, but the wellness coordinator from Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch asked if there'd be an opportunity for them to come out and do it again. <laughs> so we're setting up actually a smaller version for those Fargo, Far Fargo kids that we'll have now. And um, so we're gonna end up with two events. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yeah, but so I mean, it was, yeah. And, and you know, when we started, we thought, yeah, we got, you know, some friends that have boats. We figured they'd be coming. It's like, well, they end up having like, soccer or soccer going on or baseball going on it's like oh okay <laughs> so basically of the 11 and greg asked this you know how many of those people did you know before this and it's like well we, we knew of like three of them four of them <laughs> so we didn't know them personally many of you know so it's like basically you know all volunteers and a lot, some of them right away said hey i want to be involved and contact us on you know facebook yep. or facebook or my phone would just ring randomly yeah. Really? I saw this online, or I talked to this guy at U Motors. He said, you're doing this. I want to be a part of it. And so, yeah, it was just, I had to actually, all those unknown numbers that show up on your phone <laughs> that you don't answer anymore, I had to start answering them <laughs> because my number was out there for everything. Huh. But, yeah, I mean, I have a list of 10 to 15 places that I could call for kids. I mean, it was just, people are like, oh, this group would like it, or this group, or I know of this group. And so, yeah, it's hard to... You know, you say we invited a lot, but I actually feel like we only invited a small percentage of what we could. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but if you need so, 11 boats and, right. and, you know, like you need 11 volunteers with a boat, yeah, I so was we have concerned to, we too. have to grow equally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, when we first talked about this, we're like, well, let's try and keep it small, quote unquote, to like figure out what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. so that like, was me. We, you would have jumped into two days to start. <laughs> but I we, said we needed to figure out what all we're right, doing. All right, fair enough. <laughs> but it's like, but you want to, you know, figure it out. The first year, this is the first year we've done it. So right. it's like, what, you know, what's it like? What did, you know, what are the expectations? Like, you don't know. It's the first event. Like, 
You want to do it again? Absolutely. I mean, not the we'll, same, like next year? We'll do it every year. That's the plan. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It's going to be an annual event now. Annual event. I mean, it, I, I don't know. Almost everybody to a T, it's like, when are we doing it next year? Okay. Like the day of. Like, when they are we doing next year? They wanted to sign up. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the volunteers. Day, volunteers. The first event, it wasn't even done yet. Yeah. And we were sitting on the dock, those of us who were on shore. And the one lady just turned and looked at me and said, is it too early to ask what next year's date is? Wow. So the day wasn't even done yet. and She, she so, enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Yep. So within a week, we had next year's date set. Yeah. So really? Yeah. Yep. It, it's it just, yeah. All the feedback from the kids, from the organizers, the directors, like all that. From the boat drivers. Boat drivers yeah. specifically. Assistance. So you going to do it on Comrade Lake again? No. It was actually on Pelican Lake. Oh, it was on Pelican. It was all on right. Pelican Lake because with that amount of boats, you need to find a place that has enough docks. Right. So that everybody, you know, can tie up for the day and the kids can, you know, get on there. And so... So you did it at the Zorba's we, dock or where? Yep, the Zorba's U-Motors area right, right. in there. To load, uh, to, yeah, load them or Yeah, whatever. right. So like a, like in Cormorant, there's, there's no resorts. So a lot, a lot of times these events are at resorts where they have a bunch of docks, right? Well, oh, there's sure. no resorts in Cormorant. Sure. You know? So then there's no, no real dock space where you can have 11 boats or 15 boats or whatever. Right. So we need somewhere with that many boats, and, and we actually were talking to Nate at U Motors, and like, hey, we want to do this event, and he's like, you can use our dock. I'm like, right. good, I already asked the Zorba's guy, <laughs> yeah. you know. And so both of them said you can use ours, so that's I'm like, well, let's do it then. That's good. I was just thinking, um, if uh, to grow it, and because of the amount of boats needed and such, if there were like the lake chapters, like there's this one on Pelican, there's this one on Comra, there's another one on Big Detroit, like if if it's like organized uh, with volunteers that yep. you lift up yeah you know if there's yep. and, there, and there could be we could do it that way yeah um so uh, you know some of uh, some of our boat drivers had their boats on pelican some of them like us pulled their boats from big cormorant over to pelican or from other lakes okay no biggie yeah so uh, you, you have know, a trailer right <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly it's it's funny around here like people let's not run here and like people don't pull their boats a lot because they're on their lake right right but most of these events, and most of these work the world ones across the country, they all pull their vent boats over. Sure. Like, that's the way they do it. Correct. Right? They don't necessarily live on the lake, most of them. Correct. So. So when we were starting this, we were like, okay, what do we call it? Because it's Wake the World, but then sometimes it'll be the lake name or a city name or, you know, we we couldn't decide. We It's Lakes Country, and this is where we're at. So we wanted, you know, Becker County involved in the Detroit Lakes area. Mm. But so many of those people come from Fargo. Mm -hmm. and are here for the weekend mm -hmm. and we knew some of our kids may come from Fargo so we ended up Wake the World Minnesota North Dakota mm -hmm. made so that we could just encompass and include everybody so maybe you know they have a boat and they live in Fargo and they want to trailer it down for the day mm -hmm. you know we had kids from Becker County and Fargo so it was really nice just to be able to include everybody mm -hmm. yeah and not not exclude anybody yeah wow. same thing like the whole organization which is one thing I like about it even more so as a talked to Greg and got a little more closer to it. It's in the event that we specifically wanted to do it, so we don't want it to be commercialized. Mm. Like a lot of events are like so commercialized these days. It's like yeah. this is this is about the kids and like the volunteers doing it. It's not about, you know, the branding and all this like a normal event would be. Yeah. It's always yeah. So, so that's you know, not that there's anything wrong with those events. Those are fun to be fun to do too. No, no. But, but the I, point of this, it's like you know, this is a homegrown sort of thing. We want to keep it that way. It's kind of like a community, like a community yeah. event mm -hmm. from the people for the people. Yes. So yes. It's it's more so. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I I think that's beautiful, and I agree. It's not sponsored by yep. whatever brand, and then they hand out like Life the, Weekend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I, you know, I like that. In, in Europe, it's usually more humble. It's like not about the logo on every yeah. piece of thing. It's more like for the event. And I, I like that. Um, nevertheless, uh, you are accepting uh, uh, help, mm -hmm. uh, um, whether it be by people volunteering with their equipment slash boat uh, with their time. Yeah, they was it a Tuesday? It was a Tuesday. Tuesday. So those boat owners, you know, not only were bringing out their boat and their equipment and their gear, and giving you know their time, they very possibly had to take the day off from work on top of it. I was going to say, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's I mean, a big gift. It is. It it's is a, a big, very gift. big gift. It, yeah, and like the organ, the the like from the where we got the kids, like they were they were so impressed with the dedication of the boat drivers. They're yeah. like, I mean, they understand. They took a day off. They brought their boat full of gas. They brought all their gear. They had to do the safety certificate if they didn't have one already. That, mm. that takes like eight hours, by the way. Mm. <laughs> Can't take that long. You know, so long. Um, <laughs> but then they're like. They were so engaged mm -hmm. with the kids on like 
on the water. They to, want to give. They wanted to give. They wanted to teach them how to do whatever it is they're trying to do, whether it was a wakeboard or surf or even tube, whatever. Or like a lot of the kids were, weren't sure they want to get in the water. Oh, well, yeah. Pretty they're soon they're swimming like, with their sweatpants on. Like They really did. Like a yeah. couple of the kids showed up. They just wanted to ride on the boat for the day. Oh, wow. So they showed up in sweatpants. And then out at the sandbar, pretty soon they were in the water in their sweatpants and swimming with ducks. And <laughs> so, you know, it was all about the, you know, small victories too for those kids like the yeah. idea of just going on the boat yeah. or just stepping in the water um just so they could experience something they had never experienced before and be proud of it mm -hmm. yeah so huh. the, like in the day we you know we had a lunch and we had a dinner and they had like a goodie bag for the kids everybody got a t-shirt um so like the sponsors when we were talking about a little bit earlier it's like yeah we still want sponsors of course but like all their names were on the back of the shirt almost all of them i guess most of the business names were back of the shirt. sometimes the individuals donate too you know they didn't want their name on the back of the shirt for example <laughs> but yeah so it's like they, you know they get a whole day they get, everybody got a towel <laughs> yeah you know, i mean they just, they showed up we gave them sunscreen we gave them a beach towel um we didn't give them their t-shirts until later on in the day um so we you know sent them out on the boat with water and then they came back in and um between zorba's and a couple of other businesses we were able to you know have zorba's pizzas out there for lunch for them and then really? back out on the boat they went and then um, Brig and Hub 41 catered in supper. We had a young girl from Fargo come and sing, so there was entertainment for them to end the day. They all left with a goodie bag that had, well, it had Lake Life weekend stuff in it. It had hats, coloring books, pencils. I don't even remember what all was in there. Just goodies and treats that even those things to them yeah. are super fun because it's not something they're used to, you know, having excess of. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure it's the memory. Yeah, like, yep. the, mm -hmm. hey, I swam with the ducks in my sweatpants. <laughs> yes. I cannot believe I didn't bring my trunks. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, whatever moments, I think that, like, what we are always talking about, like, childhood memories uh, at grandma's lake cabin or those things that we may remember of, or you more than me, uh, uh, about growing up at the lake. Now you gave we those gave kids memories. Memory. Yep. Yep. And, and maybe growing up they because the lakes are accessible to anyone yeah i mean th we have public beaches uh, yeah. um, uh, quite a few of them um, we researched uh, recently um, in particular detroit lakes has a i think they claim a, a mile i have never really figured if it's really a mile but it's <laughs> a l i know it's very long yep and uh, it's always actually busy yep. or used used i should say yep. it's not really overcrowded yeah um, so maybe forth going those kids get a field trip from the boys and girls clubs uh, um, just to just spend to go the swim. day yeah. Yeah. swimming. I mean, yeah. a boat is an additional huge gift and yeah. I I think uh, uh, that that was really amazing. I love the from the people for the yeah. kids mm -hmm. and the community effort. Yep. I just hope that there's more people being able to uh, help volunteer and support. Um, so you said, when is it next year? July 21st. Also a Tuesday. It's also a Tuesday. We're <laughs> sticking with that. The lake is less busy, right. so it gives the boats just more space to take the kids out and do whatever they want. And less traffic, less, yep. less everything around. Yeah, I Tuesday. agree. That's yep. probably the best route. Yep. Yeah. And you can focus more. So you feel that you have maybe 45 kids instead of the 35? Do you think there's going to be an increase? I don't think we've come up with a number yet. No, I think we'll see who reaches out to us. And okay. Yeah. I mean, now that we've done it once, and I like to plan things, like I'm a make a list, check it off, cover the details type of person. So planning events for me is fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it was definitely something that I mean I could double what we did. Yeah. And yeah, but you need volunteers, so you probably at, le at least need eleven boats. Oh, again. we need, we need no more. We need more boats. I mean, that's you know need more boats and need more kids. But yeah, I mean, once it's been out here and. The people that have brought their boats have talked about it, or volunteers like wow then we start hearing like hey we want to bring we want to come next year we want to bring our boat so one of our boat drivers sent me a message and he's like okay i've already had three other people reach out to me they want to bring their boats next year yeah how do i get on the list yeah i wish so. i had so many volunteers <laughs> here on my door. this is a really impressive i'm, I'm just you amazed know, but that also shows how giving our yeah. community is yes. and how we really care for children and young lives. So that's yeah. actually a wonderful story. The uh, support from the community was amazing. Yeah. From the people who were volunteering to the businesses that whether they, they donated something for the goodie bags or they donated money for us to buy whatever we needed. I mean, it was 
Yeah. We we know we live in a good community, yeah. but it reinforced what we already know about our great community. Yeah. So that was really nice. It was it was an emotional event. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah there were really lots was. of tears, lots of happy tears oh, really? because I mean, you just see the impact yeah. you're making. Yeah. And so yeah, it was an emotional week, you know, even the day after when the guy from Fargo called to give me feedback. Yeah. And he's like, I just still can't believe that you guys just put together this event and how you did it and so we've got our littlest in gymnastics and I'm in the entryway talking and there's tears on my <laughs> face and I can tell there's you know emotion in his voice and all the kids wrote thank you cards and sent them out to us yeah. and so yeah it was good emotions but it definitely you know makes us realize how blessed we are and then how you know hopefully it keeps in our mind that we should be giving back right How can people reach you? If uh, um, is there an email or like, do you have a chapter website? Yeah, there's a Facebook account and an Instagram account, and it's Wake the World M N N D. Oh, okay. For like Wake the World Minnesota North Dakota, um, and then my phone number is it's on there. On on there, and my email address, mm -hmm. and you know, I do most of the checking of all of that. So. So people can see some images of the past event. Yep. And then get in contact with you. Through the Facebook page, uh, Wake the World M N N D. Yes. Well, and that's the Facebook or Instagram. If you search for those, that's real. Yep. I think most people, yeah, that's, yep. that's a good platform. And if you do end up in waketheworld.org, there's also a link there that has like all the the sites, all the different events. Mm -hmm. If you find the Minnesota from North Dakota one, you click that, and I, th I think my actually emails on that one. But are we the only event in Minnesota here? Or is there other ones like, let's say, I don't know, there's Gull Lake? Or there's one down on Green Lake. It's uh -huh. been on. I think it's this is the second year of it. Uh -huh. I think there's a smaller one down on Green Lake. You know, just, what is that, west of Minneapolis. Hour and a half, two hours, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. But this is a first ever for this area. Yeah, mm -hmm. for up here, mm -hmm. it's the first one. There's none in North Dakota. I think Greg was really excited we were going to be in North Dakota. It's like, well, our lakes are really far on the other side. Yeah, so we're going to be in Minnesota. For the, yeah. for he the did boat. fly into North Dakota. He did fly into Fargo. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, you know, their website, when we wanted to do this, like, they just have a series of videos yeah. that you can watch. So the guidance is huge. Mm -hmm. And it makes you feel like you can actually pull it off. And then the fact that he flew in yeah. and spent a couple of days before the event with us so that we could get to know him and he could get to know us on a personal mm -hmm, level mm -hmm. made all the difference in the world. Like, you really feel like you're part of a family. Yeah. He was, yeah. We, we, I, we were driving up to, he had an appointment up with uh, Varadi Boats up in northwest Minnesota. Uh huh. Um, McGregor, as we're by McGregor. And the Zorba's up there, actually. Uh, so, I, so I went with him because he had this appointment. I had the day off already and because we were supposed to set up for Wake the World. But we went up there, and on the way, I'm like, hey, you know, the Headwater in Mississippi is like 20, 20 minutes up here. He's like, really? He got all excited about that. <laughs> so he's like, on the way back, we got to stop there. I'm like, oh, okay. So, yeah, we went up, did the variety boats tour thing, whatever, and came back. And, yeah, we took the detour, went to Itasca, and walked across Mississippi. And he thought that was super cool, you know? Of course. Yeah. You yeah, know, we're like yeah, we can go there any time, right? But yeah, <laughs> but we forget. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. forget. So. I brought guests from Germany there too. Yeah. My son's got a uh, father, and yeah, yeah my parents. And, and we stopped in Reamer, Minnesota, the Bigfoot capital or something. Oh, so there was a bunch of Bigfoot stuff there. He thought that was super <laughs> neat. You know, <laughs> I bought a gift for somebody, sent it down to him from there too. But yeah, just so I talked to him for like that whole day, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, traveling for three hours each way. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, you got to know him and. Very cool. All that sort of stuff. Sounds He's cool. the founder of the organization. Yep. yep. And uh, you're a, a Minnesota ambassador. Yeah, we're, I'm, I think we're, uh, what's the worst word? Like coordinators or something? Event oh, no, coordinators? I meant you, 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 oh, yes. You represent Minnesota. Yep. And yes, we represent Minnesota. He's a form. guest from uh, North Carolina, I think you said. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very yep, cool. Yep, exactly. Yeah, and it was, it was a family event. Like, mm -hmm. our yeah. oldest two kids were out there helping for the day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of their friends and the boat drivers brought their families with. It was a husband and a wife and a couple of their kids. And, mm -hmm. you know, so everybody was, you know, you're giving back to these kids who may not have this opportunity, but then you're showing your kids how to give back and, mm -hmm. you know, not take advantage of the things that, you know, they have and are blessed with. And mm -hmm. so it was really neat to see yeah. every aspect. If you look, there were just so many different variables and parts of it that, you know, And most, I mean, most of the boat, most of the boats had, had two people, people at least, a driver and assistant. You know, mm -hmm. whether it was a spouse or their friend or whatever. So we didn't have too many. A few of them had this, another assistant, you know, to help teach whatever. But yeah, most most boats brought two people, yeah. at least. You know, I like the aspect of showing the the, the children yeah. uh, and and 
engaging everybody to help also and yeah. make that big circle. I, I think it's a wonderful idea. I think we can say thank you for bringing it to our area. And um, I'm glad that we were invited by you to, to witness and capture some of the moments. Um, and then we are excited for next year. Uh, um, to I don't have a big boat. I have an outboard motor. <laughs> so uh, um, we, we can find a boat to put you on. Yeah, well, you I would love yeah. to be on a board and, yeah. and yeah. assist, uh, be the assistant, uh, the rear view mirror, and, yeah. check, uh, uh, and, and, and check the life jackets and whatnot. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, um, I would love to be part of that. Um, and maybe we have a um, happy listener or like a, um, an en engaging listener that wants to take part as a volunteer as well and, and we guide them to your Facebook page uh, Wake the World MNND and maybe you hear from somebody that heard the program that would be awesome yeah I'm very glad you contacted us and uh, I'm very glad you came today to, to capture this story um, thanks for your work and um, helping the children um, you have a wonderful weekend ahead <laughs> thank you alright thank you thanks for having us thank you Yeah, this was already our uh, newest episode of the Lake Life Weekend podcast. We sure hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tune in again next week with another great guest and updates. Always check out our website, uh, lakelifeweekend.com. And if you have some comments, please feel free to email us at hello at lakelifeweekend.com. And uh, you have a wonderful weekend ahead. Uh,